much, uh, good doctor. We can all be seated. Our provincial deputy chairperson, secretary, members of the provincial election task force, the convener Ndlozi, and uh, our MMCs who are here with us. Let me also acknowledge all of you, especially our elders uh, from the retirement home and all the activists of the EFF. I'm happy to be here in El Dorado Park. And um, when they said I was coming here, someone thought I was coming here for the first time. It's not true. I've been here many times, especially when I was the president of the ANC Youth League. I used to go into the flats and look at the conditions of our people in the flats and try to fight for them to change those conditions of our people. El Dorado Park, we all know, is part of all the racist um, areas that were created by racist group Areas Act that said colors must go this side, African this side, Indians this side. They wanted to divide us and not allow us to see ourselves as one thing. They did so in the 50s. And they said, you are colored, I'm an African, he's an Indian. But we're all oppressed. Why, when we are different, are we oppressed the same? So it means standing here is not an African. It's a colored. Because colored means oppressed. Blacks means oppressed. Indian means oppressed. And we are all the products of oppression. And we must never see each other through the color of our skin. We must see ourselves through the conditions we live in. My children and your children are born into unemployment. You know that my children can go to school in El Dorado Park. They will be referred to this day silently as kafirs. They will not call them kafirs openly, but they look at them and say, these kafirs will not get this high position. These kafirs will not get this business opportunity. All of that goes back to those who were privileged under uh, oppression. So we were all rejected. We were all exploited. We were all abused. And alcoholism and drug abuse was introduced not only in El Dorado Park, everywhere else where you found the oppressed people. So El Dorado Park is known for fighting. And the people of El Dorado Park are known for not being scared to confront an oppression. And that's why this area has got a good history in the struggle against apartheid. So the people of El Dorado Park and Soweto have been fighting shoulder to shoulder to defeat an apartheid government. That's why it will be wrong for anyone to say the people of Soweto must benefit more than the people of El Dorado Park. We have to benefit the same way because we were oppressed the same way. We have to fight unemployment, poverty, crime, alcohol, drug abuse, which is what affects all of us. What brings us together is that we don't own the banks, we don't own the land, we don't own the industries. Children pass metric, they don't know where to go. That's why they surrender to alcohol and drugs. So we want children of El Dorado Park uh, to be employed in the public safety, to be metro police as well. We must not just see only African metro police. There is no colored, there is no one who can speak to me in Africans in a manner that I can feel represented in the police force of Johannesburg. The same goes to uh, the health. Uh, 
when we go to a health MMC, any Makafula must make sure that they say they are going to operate a satellite clinic in the retirement village. But you cannot open a satellite village which is going to be operated by people who can speak our language, by people who understand us, by our own children who will not treat us as customers, but treat us as their parents and love us the way people love their own parents. Now, we in the EFF we are for everyone. We are for Africans, for colors, for Indians, for whites. We are for Christians, we are for Muslims, we are for all the nations because we believe South Africa is a diverse nation. Now, I hear there was a fool who went around here saying, I don't want Jesus Christ. And I ask these guys, why do they say I don't want Jesus Christ? They say, you said something some other day about Jesus Christ. I said, what is your response when they say you don't love Jesus Christ? They too don't have an answer. I say to them, you must answer them with one thing. When they say Julius Malema doesn't love Jesus Christ, you must tell them Julius Malema built a church of Christ in Sishiu where he comes from in honor of his mother. There is a house of the Lord that I've built with my own hands. And I invited Zuma to go and open that church with me. And Zuma came along. Now, those who have a mind of a red will not remember that I've built a church, not only one, but many churches. I've made a contribution to make sure that this religion of Christianity prosper as any other religion. So, I don't have anything except that myself, I'm a Christian. My religion is Christianity. My church is Sishiro Baptist Church. I pay my services there every month so that my funeral can have a pastor. I don't want Mbuiseni to be borrowed to come and make a prayer at my funeral. So, we are for everyone as the EFF we just don't want racist. We don't like drug lords. The drug lords here in El Dorado Park work with Begikele's police. They distribute drugs through the police vans and they are protected by the police. We have established a special unit for the first time under Metro Police, under the EFF MMC a special task force that goes around fighting dangerous criminals. It was here last night where we were fighting toe for toe against drug lords where we went to liberate a lady who was kidnapped. Two weeks, police could not find that person. Only the special task force of the Metro Police under the EFF found that lady here in El Dorado Park yesterday. And our MMC, who's a national leader of the EFF, was with the task force on the ground himself. Fighting crime is not a one-night stand. It's a permanent thing. We are going to fight criminals here in El Dorado Park, in Orange Farm, in Sibukeng, in Soweto, Mamilod, and everywhere in Kautem because criminals have taken over our towns and our townships. We need to reclaim those places. We need to make sure that there is sports in El Dorado Park. There must be sports facilities. You can't say to children, don't go and do drugs, and you don't give them an alternative. Because children have got too much energy. That energy must be harnessed it must be channeled somewhere. If you don't use it, they will go and use it in a wrong place. That's why they must go to school. 
after school they must write homework when they think they are done with the homework they are at the sports field when they are done at the sports field back home take a shower sleep prepare for school so that that energy every time we know where that energy is is monitored and rightfully channeled not only that we want your children to go and learn for free whether you are rich or not whether you are white or not the only thing that is going to liberate this country is education that mandela should not have given us rdp houses in 1994 he should have given us free education we were going to build our own houses because when you look at educated people and you look at the percentage of unemployment amongst educated people is very low which means education and employment and empowerment are the same whatsapp group they go together poverty can be defeated by education drugs can be defeated by education so why do you say people must pay for them to liberate their own future you cannot buy education the same way you buy bread there must be a difference between education and bread bread is a commodity education is a human right that is enshrined and protected by the constitution of the republic of south africa so we want education not only at secondary level primary and early childhood development even at the universities your children must earn a seat at the university not because you have money but because their results look good just by their results they must automatically be accepted at tertiary level we are going to make sure that the children of eldorado park get employment we must demand that every department in haute must be a reflection of how Gauteng looks like. So when you go to a department, there must be a colored person. There must be an Indian person. There must be a white person. There might, must be African person. How South Africa looks like, that's how a place of employment must look like. For as long as this place of employment has got no colors it's not a true reflection of south africa it's a distortion of south africa and therefore they should they sh and we should not put a, a quota and say no in the whole department we have hired 10 percent colors is enough uh -uh. there must be colors in the departments if they qualify and they are south africans they've got a south african id let them go in without a quota the same way we don't go in with quotas we go in with our qualification the same thing with indians it's very difficult now to find an indian cop because they have all been wiped out of uh, the system that's why when people don't see you a lot they're like hey you are so scarce like an indian policeman because it's very difficult to find an Indian policeman. So we need every sector of society to be part of our society. Comrades, we don't want this. This thing of tenders is what is causing problem. You have, you are a security guard, you've got your own certificate. I want a security guard as a government. I go hire a middleman called a businessman who knows nothing about security. He just registered CC. He's got a political connection. He gets a tender to come and hire me. Why is government not hiring me directly? Because when I vote for government, I vote for government directly. I don't vote through a middleman called a company. I'm voting for jobs from my government. I'm voting for a piece of land from my government. I'm voting to stop load shedding from my government. 
No one was between me and my government. I chose it myself directly. Let my government speak to me and hire me directly without a middleman. You know, here in Johannesburg, and the media loves that because it favors them. They say Mashaba insourced workers in Johannesburg. Mashaba was told by the EFF because he was our mayor. We said to him, you are going to insource the security guards in Johannesburg. And he insults the security guards in Johannesburg. Today he claims that it was him. I ask him one question. You were sent by the DA into that municipality. Where in the DA do you find a policy that says you must insult the security guards? It was not a DA policy that he was implementing. It was the EFF policy. Why? We made arrangements because we were We didn't have majority in the municipality of Johannesburg. It was give and take. We said to them, we are going to give you a mayor. In exchange, you are going to insource security guards in Johannesburg. And we did it to show it was not my Shabbos policy. We went to do it at Vets University. Through our own EFF student command, we said all cleaners, all security guards, must be insourced and work for the university directly without a middleman called a company. Today, the workers at Vets University are insourced because of the EFF. The workers of uh, Vets University now have benefits. As long as you are a cleaner at Vets University, your child is now entitled to go to Vets University without paying as benefits of being insulted by the EFF. So, we have already implemented this policy. That's why, when we took those security guards in uh, Johannesburg, they were earning less than 12,500 yet government is paying more for one security. Government can pay for one guard 15,000. What goes into the pocket of the guard is 4,500. He's got no pension benefits. He's got no medical aid. My original home is in Limpopo. I know that because our fathers used to come back empty-handed and sick. And there will be a general, general accusation that these people were lazy. Women ate their money in Johannesburg which is not true. They worked at the gate of a municipality for 35 years, but they were exchanged by different companies that were getting tenders from that municipality. Every five years, every three years, there is a new company. You get transferred to that company, no pension, no benefits, no nothing. You die poor, yet you worked for 35 years. Now, with the EFF policy, they now get benefits. They've got pension, they've got medical aid, they've got leave days. Remember in those companies of security guards, you don't even have leave days because if you go to leave, you are fired. You find a new person on your position. So we want all who work for government to be insourced and cleaners to be insourced because a cleaner is a worker. The same way a lecturer at Vets is a worker. They are both workers at different level. They must all get workers' benefits at their different level. And that's what the EFF is fighting for. We want to make sure that all of us have learned. We don't want this thing of squatter camps and all of that. We want every piece of land to be formalized. You know the EFF is the only brave organization. When we find a squatter camp, because our people just build, we reallocate them in the same township and tell them in the same squatter camp, this is going to be a public road. 
when you, demarc- when you give yourselves land, don't stay the way the Boers were making you stay. It's now you who's allocating the land. Why do you occupy the land in a manner that doesn't reflect a human settlement? So, we have taken a department of human settlement in Ikuruleni. You will see in Ikuruleni, we are going to formalize informal settlement and formalization of informal settlement does not only mean passing that in the council. It means immediately our MMC must go into the so-called squatter camp and start picking people properly, opening roads, identifying piece of land for place of worship, for shopping complex, for a clinic that will operate 24 hours, for school. We must not be like ANC that goes and find an empty land next to a mountain. No water, no electricity, no nothing. Build RDP houses there and take all of you from your suffering in El Dorado Park, but at least you had some water, some flushing toilet. Take you there and dump you in the bush and say, clap your hands for being turned into baboons by the ANC. Why do you take me? I'm saying to you, we want a house. We want roads. We want it. You take me away from where those things are. And then you go and dump me and say, I'm coming back to give you what? When? I want water now. The day I occupy that house is the day I must drink water. And to show that I'm liberated, that day I must bath nicely in my own house that has got a flushing toilet and a bathroom. It is not a house if it doesn't have a toilet. No shack is built with a toilet. So once you get into it and there is no toilet, you must know it's a glorified shack. It's not a house. What is a house? When we were marching in El Dorado Park and so it, we said, we don't want matchbox houses. We want houses. When we said we want houses, we were looking at those houses of poor white people which were built for them by apartheid government. We said we want something like that or even much better than that. We get worse than that and we clap hands. We have been zombified in the name of the struggle. We have been zombified in the name of Nelson Mandela. When you talk, they say, hey, this is ANC of Mandela. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. But we voted for Mandela. We honored him. He passed on. Leave him to rest in peace and allow us to determine our own destination. So, we really are in trouble if we continue the way we are. Here in El Dorado Park, you just go and elect a councillor of a drug lords, of a, a drug organization, of gangsters. The president of that organization says in the debate yesterday, Comrade Carl, he was debating with Mzwane Lemani. He says, the business of drugs, he thinks he's making a point, Dr. Andrews. The business of drugs has been taken over by Nigerians. I'm like, he wants us to take over the business of drugs. He doesn't say, we must close down the drugs. His problem with the Nigerians is that they can no longer sell drugs as leaders of patriotic alliance. They want Nigerians to go so that they can sell the drugs. That's what he said. He said, go and watch that debate. He said, the business of drugs has been taken over by Nigerians. You know when you say the business of selling on the pavements has been taken uh, by Zimbabweans because we want them to go we want to sell ourselves vegetables, uh, fruits, and survive. I can listen to that. But you are not going to mobilize me 
that I must fight another drug lord to replace that drug lord with you as a drug lord. We are not fighting the drug lords. We are fighting the drugs. The drugs must get out of South Africa. Once the drugs are out of South Africa, there won't be a drug lord. The problem is the drugs. The problem is crime. It's not who is committing crime. So we must never be mobilized under some wrong sentiments. Hey, these people are taking our jobs. I saw a lady there in the debate saying, these people are taking our jobs. And I told the EFF comrades where they said, get me a number. Because she says they took a job. She must take me to a job which was taken from her. I will put her in that job and remove those people who have taken the job from her. Because I hear this thing that they've taken our jobs. I'm like, which ones? You never worked since you passed metric. Because jobs were given to ANC corrupt people. Whether Zimbabweans are going or not, you will never get in as long as you don't have a political connection. The problem is not Zimbabweans. The problem is corruption of the ANC that gives people jobs on the basis of families and relatives. And above all, I hope children close their ears. They also use sex to give each other jobs in this Johannesburg municipality. It's not Zimbabweans who took a job from you. There are no jobs. Why are there no jobs? The economy is not growing. Because only a growing economy can produce jobs. So the economy is not stagnant because some Zimbabwean is holding a rope for the economy not to grow. The economy is not growing because white people who have money in South Africa are not reinvesting money in the economy. They've got it in liquidity in their banks. So that the day you hold against them, they don't have to carry a building. They just press transfer and then the money goes. That's what makes our economy to be stagnant. Corruption of the ANC. The inability to think of the ANC. Because today, we have minerals. There is what we call chrome. That when processed, it produces steel. There is nothing today you build in South Africa that doesn't want steel. Which means steel is in demand. Why are we not producing steel through beneficiation of chrome in South Africa and create jobs for our own children? Why are we not closing these people, closing these entrances of the airports and the ports, all of them, where fake goods are brought in? Someone said, no, there are fake goods are coming in here. They come from Zimbabwe. I'm like, Zimbabwe, which goods are they producing in Zimbabwe? They are not from Zimbabwe. They are far away from Zimbabwe. We need to close those and create manufacturing industries the way we used to do in the Western Cape. And the colored community was leading that manufacturing sector in the Western Cape. So, all you need is leaders who think. Not leaders who look at, what can I steal now? No, we'll steal after 30 years. Hey, 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 now, 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 I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now. Now that we're going to election on the 29th of May, the situation is worse. They are stealing left, right, and center because the results are showing that the ANC is not coming back. The results are showing that the DA is not coming back. The results are showing that gangsters' parties are not going to govern this government of Haute. So, they are stealing everything they can get hold of because they know they are not coming back. Eldorado Park, we are not going to vote for a councillor now. We are going to a provincial election. We are going to a national election. Do not make a mistake you made with the councillor. That mistake is not Eldorado Park 
mistake alone. This time you make a mistake. You collapse the whole country. You cannot entrust our country in the hands of gangsters, in the hands of the corrupt, in the hands of the racist. You need to entrust this government in the hands that loves black people. Who are the black people? Colored Africans, Indians, who were oppressed. And this is the only organization that represents those people. Today, we are lucky and we are told by television we must celebrate that 22 days uh, we didn't have load shedding. Let's call a party and say there's, there's no load shedding. We are being made to celebrate stupid things. Even on the news, they write it there down. It keeps on passing. 22 days without load shedding. You know why they're saying? They suspended load shedding because of the elections. Because load shedding is man-made. To show that load shedding is man-made, during our Rugby World Cup, we love rugby, there was no load shedding. How can electricity know that there is a rugby World Cup? <laughs> Only a human being will know that there is a World Cup and the bosses want to watch. After they paraded the cup, the last day load shedding came. Boom. And it didn't just come. It went stage six. Let me tell you, the suspended load shedding is going to come back on the 29th at 12 midnight when we counting the votes. Because you know these criminals, they are going to switch off the electricity and steal the votes. So they must find Eldorado Park ready. When they switch off load shedding, you switch on the torch. Hey, crook, we know you. So, Load shedding is man-made. We can fix it. They say to us, do not use coal, it's polluting. After saying do not use coal, is polluting, they say to us, bring that coal here. They say don't use it. But go and look at how many trucks are lining up. Going to Richards Bay in KZN, off to Germany, Britain, all of Europe, including China. They say to you, close this power station that gives you 1,000 megawatts. For what alternative? They don't have. We will never close any power station. If you want us to close any power station for a green energy, you must say to us, close 1,000 megawatts, shut it down. We are giving you 1,000 megawatts from wind from gas and all of that. If you don't give us that, we have no reason to close. You must always have a base to build from. So we, our base in South Africa is coal. We support the mixed energy sources, but we cannot be made to suffer before we realize the resolution. Gradually, we are going to convert into an alternative. We say in the EFF, we believe one of the biggest contributors to, or one of the biggest con consumers of electricity is heating. When you have electricity geyser, it's the one that consumes a lot of electricity. They are now solar geysers and gas geysers. As a bargain, why is government not saying in Haute? We are going to replace all your geysers. We will give you a gas geyser. You give us the electricity geyser. We go and destroy it. We have relieved the grid from a pressure. The second one is, why do we cook with electricity when there is gas stoves? And we are the ones who approve. We are the ones who approve plans. Come when I want to build a house here in Eldorado Park, I submit the plans to the municipality. Municipality must say, in these new plans, we want to see 
gas stove and gas geyser. Once we are removed from cooking and heating from electricity, we have relieved the greed of a significant portion of consumption. Those are immediate practical things that can be done. And who's going to swap this? Jesus, it's your children. We employ them. At the same time, we resolve two issues of electricity crisis and unemployment because solutions are there. So I am here to say to you, this is my home. I belong to the colored community. They belong to me. We are one thing and nothing can separate us. Your problems are my problems. When I fight corruption, when I fight stealing from our government, I'm thinking of you. I want your children to be liberated and be part of those communities that are prospering. I don't like this thing that every time we speak of drugs, you think of colored communities. We need to destroy that. When we speak of gangsta, we think of colored communities. When we speak of unemployment, alcohol, colored communities. No. We need to fight all those social ills in the co colored communities and restore your dignity. So, when we're preparing for this meeting, they say, hey, no, uh, you have to arrive at 2 o'clock at Eldorado Park. Why? They say at 6 is dangerous. It's dangerous. It will never be dangerous as long as my people are living there. It means I can also live amongst those people. Whatever danger they are confronting, let me experience it today. Because I'm not going into uh, Eldorado Park sneaking in and sneaking out. I'm not going to surrender my independence and the independence of the people of Eldorado Park to the hands of criminals. Why would a government come something normalize that there at six is dangerous. It means we know why are we not deploying the necessary force to deal with the problem because we know the problem. Now that you told us you can't come in here at six o'clock is dangerous, it means there must be a permanent deployment. After six, there must be visible policing. And uh, if the police of Eldorado Park are corrupt, get other police from outside to come and monitor the crime in Eldorado Park. So, I'm confident that under the EFF government, we will be free. None of us come from prison for stealing from people and roping people. None of us has got a history of being in a relationship with gangsters. None of us has got a relationship with drug lords. We joined the struggle at a young age. The choice is yours. If you want to elect drug lords or you want children who grew up in a struggle against the oppression of black people. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President and Commander-in-Chief. President, we, we like to put it to you that the girl that was rescued last night is amongst us here. She came to attend this manifesto. So thank you, President. Thank you, our MMC. EFF have already started to work here in Eldos. I'm now going to open up hands for those that are going to engage with the President and the Commander-in-Chief about the message. Uh, you'll be number one, Baba. Number two, number three, number four, number five, Number six, 
number seven there in the corner, number eight there. Thank you very much. Can we have the roving mic? We start with our old man here in the front. Berlin. Thank you. Right there. Right there. Good day. Good day, Commander Chief. Mr. Good day, Commander in Chief, Mr. Julian Smalema, and everyone present here with you today. Uh, I've made some notes which I'm going to run through as fast as possible because there's quite a bit here. Uh, my name is uh, Farouk uh, Van Dorset, and I. But then yes, hold yeah. for the old people. And I come from the old apartheid system where I saw my father, my mother, myself being beat up with your box. So we know what this thing is all about. We grew up with this thing. Ten families using one toilet. We grew up with all these things. And Commander, I want to tell you that generally our colored people I had no respect for you, etc., etc., because of certain utterances you made. However, however, I have been studying you, your speeches, your appearances for the past year. You have actually mellowed like fine brandy with age oh, and wow. experience. Your speech I've heard here today is one of the best I've heard in my times. Thank you. you. Commander-in-Chief, uh, quite a number of us in our surrounding uh, colored areas have formed an EFF group which you have subsequently joined through the help of Mr. Carl Niels. He has been very, very instrumental in getting us together. <laughs> your, your rhetoric to the colored and Indian community and the black community is about watering, to say the least. And we appreciate that coming from you, Commander, to think where you come from and where you are at today. You are matured. Yes, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you've matured. And also I want to rectify you on one mistake you made there. It's not the, the, uh, the Indians or the least police we see, it's the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, we are starting our campaign this week. We're doing the ground week. We're starting this weekend in 21 colored areas to make a way our colored and Indian people or of who this great party is all about. You are a great party, and you guys have emerged at the time when we need you most. I want to tell you something about Zuma. He was our best past pre, uh, pre uh, uh, president after the apartheid years. I'll tell you why. Look what he brought to the table. He may have been stealing a lot. Yes, we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> but our colored people had work. Our Indian people had work. In all the spheres of government. If you look, I'll give you a typical example. What the coloreds brought to the table. The 1996 African Cup was won with six colored players in the team. Yes. Am I right? Yes. 
and two were sitting on the bench. That's an eight-old goat. We were the best in trades, builders, cabinet makers, you name it. The colors were the best. We may have had more opportunities, yes, more opportunities than our black brothers. That is a fact. That is a given. But we were the tradesmen, the teachers. We had a multitude of, we had so many teachers that half our teachers left for Australia. Why? We needed them here. I have lots of friends in Australia who are teachers who are retired today. And that is a given, that is a fact. Okay? Now I want to, I, I, the, our, our people's problems, yes. our, people, our people's problems are all very similar. Wherever you're going to go, our problems are identical or similar. I want to point out uh, a few things. What does Guys, that get, sorry. Can we remain order so that all of us are going to get the opportunity to speak? Let's what give a What it has happened to our fisheries during uh, 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 ANC government? 180,000 fishermen along the Cape Coast gone to pieces, families. And that includes Africans and blacks. They destroyed the industry for our people and given it to the big fishermen from overseas. Big Chinese ships, big Portuguese ships, all on our coast taking our fish. Now this is a very sore point, uh, Commander, very sore point. And uh, I want to tell you that I am almost, you could say, Kryptonian. My first wife was Capetonian, and I was in and out of Cape Town three or four times a year. Okay? Now, the selling of Cape Town is on the cards. And I truly believe that the ANC is in cahoots with the Democratic Party to sell Cape Town. There's a rumor, which I believe is true, that Stiernazen has been given 500 million rands. This is a very ripe rumor by the American government. What for? And where is that money? Why doesn't SARS know about that money? Where is that money needed? SARS wants their portion. Where is that money? And then, uh, Commander Chief, this is very important. This is one of the most important things I have <coughs> to bring to your, your attention here. The only, the only legacy a poor person will have is a home. The only legacy is yes. a home. When that person yes. dies and he says, I've got a home for my children, which I'm leaving for use. What a pleasure Thank to you. die. Thank you very much. Number two. Then, oh, then, you, you are not done, Baba, because we are eight. In then, co in conclusion, yes. Let me help, uh, Baba. We've uh, had. Let's give others a chance uh, to to also address commander in I chief. just want to say one more thing. In, in exactly 10 seconds. Right. Uh, on drugs. Yes. I live in a, a, an area which Shh. commander in chief knows very well, Bosmont. Next to nuclear. Yes. Where all the murdering goes on. Late at night, late at night, we see police vans at all the drug houses. Yeah. The police, let me tell you something, they are the mafia. Thank you. The police are indeed the mafia. I'm going to request that uh, we become considerate uh, and give as many people to, to, to reply to the president as possible. So let's go to number two. Yes, Mama. And you are free uh, to prat Africans. Uh, Africans prat if you feel uh, if you feel so. We will we will we will hear. Good day. My name is Avril Morris. 
I'm a, gr- I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and I'm a great-grandmother. My problem is our education system in El Dorado Park. Secondly, our drugs. You know, I've got five grandchildren, boys. I've got 13 grandchildren. I've got five boys. I heard the chief said there must be playgrounds, there must be this and that. I don't want my grandchildren to go out. I'm afraid to let my granddaughters go to a shop. Mm. Uh, Our education system is so poor. I'm staying in extension nine. My grandson must go to a school in Clipsprate, which he hates. He comes home every day. You talk to the Mr. Kelly and Mr. I don't know who, you are nothing because who are you to ask us about placements in our schools? Thirdly, I've got a house. My husband passed away two years ago. I must go and pay a pensioner 2100 I've got grandchildren, that's with me. I must pay a lawyer 20000 or more to put the house on my name. It's my house now. Where am I going to get the money to get the house on my name? If something happens to me, my children must suffer. I've suffered enough. I'm born in, and bred in Cliptown. There's my granny's house still standing. I must still come and suffer. Where am I going to get the money? I thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mama. Uh, Councillors of the EFF, let us take details for the cases that uh, are being spoken about. I don't see that GPS happening. Uh, yes, number three. Shh. Good, good afternoon. I'm actually not from here. I'm from Kruger's Dop. But I heard that the CIC is coming on this side. We've got a problem in Mohale City, CIC. My family stayed in the blood since 1955. And in 2014, my mother also worked in the blood. In 2014, we saw the white people coming in the blood. They called us kafirs. They called my mother from Mantahe kafir maid. And one of them said he's going to kill my mother. The other one said... He's going to make my mother disappear. And the other one said he's going to do a forceful removal. On the 10th of October last year, our house was demolished illegally. Please come and intervene in Mohale City. Because there's so much corruption there. We were taken out of the land illegally and we stayed there since 1955. Thank you. Yes, uh, number four. Revolutionary greetings, Commander-in-Chief. Yes, sir. And, and, and all the panel. So my, I would like just to make a statement and a question. So the statement that I want to make, I want to share your sentiments in saying we cannot at this point in time refer to human beings through the color of their skin. We cannot call people black. We cannot call people colored. We cannot be, call people Indian. We are South Africans. We have to understand that because this racial classification that was carried over from apartheid years and has still been accommodated by this regime, we, we are saying we cannot, we cannot be racially classified. I, for one, and you said it, Commander-in-Chief, I want, I want to correct you as well. There is no thing as a colored. I do not look like all coloring pencils and crayons. I am indigenous, I am Khoisan, I am Busman. I am the owner of this country. So we need to start identifying and classifying each other in the correct terms. Uh, MMC of safety. I've met with the MMC of safety. We would, at the elders, yes, elders movement, you've done a remarkable job. We applaud you for doing that. You came in here with your special force and you've, 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 you've made elders quiet. Some of our community members complained in the rough handled, but you made a difference. Mm. I want to give you credit and I want to respect you for that. Mm. Commander-in-Chief, just a correction please. One, Commander-in-Chief, let us stop calling people colors. Two, 
Let us stop calling these people drug lords. They are not lords. They are drug dealers. We cannot call them lords. They are drug dealers. Shh. Now my question, Commander-in-Chief, and it's very disappointing. I'm, I, I am myself an activist, and I'm a robust revolutionary activist in El Dorado Park. So, I cannot fathom, I cannot understand, Commander-in-Chief, why the Employment Equity Act has passed Parliament without any party objecting. Because that is, that is racial. It says only 5% of the so-called colored people can work in a factory. Mm. How is that possible? How did that, bill, how did that bill pass Parliament? How did the Bella Bill pass Parliament? The Bella Bill that violates the parents' rights over here. How did all that legislation, Commander-in-Chief, if it's something, and I've looked at your manifesto, but I don't see the manifesto talking about scrapping racial classification. Uh, I don't see... Revolutionary, you have to round up now. I'm rounding up. Thank yeah, you. please. And then when you are done, there is a membership of the EFF here. We think maybe you can join us there in Parliament uh, so that you can make these points in the correct platform. Because this thing of coming here and saying you are a revolutionary but you don't have membership... So please wrap up. There's a, a long line behind you. Thank you. Uh, Dangi. I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. Commander in Chief, I want you to, uh, to put it, to, to look at it this way. There is racist policies that the so-called colored people are suffering from. We call it affirmative action. We call it employment equity. We call it black economic empowerment. Can we stop that racial policies and treat each other equally in this country? Dangi. Next. But Sean, this long line here is hands. Uh, uh, no, uh, Sean, we're in Abilene. We're coming here. We're coming there. Let's take uh, Uom here. He has been standing for too long. Baleni, Uom here. Sorry, so we're coming, Bra, uh, Bra Miles. Yes. So two minutes, one minute each, hello, hello. straight to the point, please. Hello. hello. I'm Henry Duplessis. I stay with the village, extension three. And the chairman there. Thank you. And uh, there's a problem there with the, with the village. There's no lights. The grass is not cut. And the house is broken, the, the, the I call it the, the, all of the, uh, the, 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 the maintainers, no? Mm. Help the maintainers do that, for the old men, sir. And by the way, help them with all of that, so what is, but I don't know if you want to say anything, but I'm going to go to the court, so. Yeah, and for all, no one does it. It's not like what they do, so. And the people who are in the last strand to break the plek in there. That's where the fence will spring. Where the mirror. And on the Golden Highway, the 12th Golden Highway, spring all over there. And they are in the break there, so. I don't know how to say it. Thank you. We understand our words, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Baleni? Go back to, to Miles. <laughs> yes. Good evening, Commander-in-Chief. Yes. The, the reason why I'm here, mm -hmm. I have relocated from the countryside where I was born on the lakeside, 90 kilometers from here. I've been here for 34 long, drawn-out years. It is in the belly of the beast where only the strong survive. I just want to ask the commander in chief whether he would allow me to ask him two personal questions. One, commander in chief, you know for a fact that I was loved by the supporters, the followers, the, the sympathizers and admirers of EFF. And you know for a fact 
that you gave instructions many years ago, 10, 12 years ago. I'm an older man now and I'm not bitter. I've grown wiser. That you gave me instruction to give you three names, including my name. But when the names were submitted, I was called by Talim Pofi and I was told that I was dropped. And I'm not bitter about it. Number two, I have a clipping here coming from Gaten McKenzie who was a member of the prisoner's organization while she was doing time. And he has made use of the opportunity to bamboozle particularly colored communities throughout the country. You know what he says some, some times ago? You, Kenny, and Julius Malema and himself are not fit enough to govern this country. That is what he say. I've got a clipping here. Maybe that's 10 years ago. But nevertheless, finally, what would be the EFF's taking to go into an alliance with Mkonto Wesizwe party? Because I know the park starts here and it stops there. Thank you. Thank you. Miles, this way. Uh, the, the line, this line, men say, this line is too long. I think we all understand that. So I'm going to break it some, at some point so that the president is able to reply. Yeah. All right. So for now, I want the president to come, respond to the few issues that have been raised, and then we'll appoint a new last round. So I plead, let us go sit all of us down. The president must come and reply, and then we will get a new round, which will be the last round. Because we must appoint from the stage... Yeah, we'll appoint another six hands. President Julius Malema. Thank you very much uh, for your comments. I think we must make it very clear that there are leaders of the EFF who are here. And if there are people with individual specific problems, perhaps they should approach the table uh, and then submit those individual problems and we see how we attend to them as individual problems. But otherwise, all our problems are the same, uh, except that there will be this or that. So, Miles Mbuizini, before, who is Miles? Before, before you spoke, when you said, I hope you are not gagging me, he said, Miles is MK and you go exactly there. What is the alliance? What will be the alliance between MK and the EFF? We absolutely have no problem with President Zuma doing what he's doing. He's got a political right to do that. And we are not far apart with MK when it comes to policies. We speak land, we speak empowerment of our people, we speak the restoration of the economy into the hands of the rightful owners. And that President Zuma, before he went to launch the party on the 16th of December, I would have met him around the 11th or 12th of December where we spoke about these matters. And he explained to me what is his movement forward. So we agreed to meet after the elections and see how the two organizations can carry each other forward. Because the unity of purpose is very important. I didn't know that the Limpo removed you from the list, so we'll talk about it, I think. And I don't know why he gets removed from the list. I don't know because he had access to me directly. Uh, ten years ago, we were together even before the formation of the EFF. He has always supported us and always been there uh, uh, for us. I really don't want to get in the comments of uh, Gaten McKenzie because I don't think I don't think he's a politician. He doesn't want to be a politician. He's in a transaction. So when they negotiate coalition in municipalities, they say we should make 200 million this year. So they are about money and making money and money schemes and all of that. So they are really not interested in, in, the, in politics. If we are to ask, what is the manifesto of the PA 
except that we saw the president jumping on the stage so that is the manifesto so we cannot talk to people who are not politicians uh, we had this issue of the lights the grass and the house breakings and service delivery from uom those are specific issues in specific area we shouldn't have a difficulty even if we are not mmcs of parks and 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 to tell the municipality there are these grass that are a security threat and the lights and so we'll take up that issue equality act we fully agree with you we must be called a human race and not be called as races and we believe that ourselves were together uh, as one because only a unity of ourselves will tell this other race that we are not against them. We never labeled ourselves black. We were labeled black by them because they wanted to distinguish themselves from us. So they classified us the way they did. And after they did that, they realized it's not enough. They came classified as amongst ourselves. So what you are teaching, really, me and you are well together. And we said, come there. Let's fight that bill uh, which uh, classifies our people and create unnecessary percentages amongst ourselves. It can be, I said that earlier, fully agree. They are not lords, they are drug dealers. And they must be called by their, their rightful name. <laughs> uh, you know, the Morali City demolition of the house, I know it, I've been following it, but I thought the EFF was intervening in that area because there were white people who went there, found a black community, demolished their houses, threatened them, males even threatening to beat up females uh, on the video. And the subsequent, I don't know if Philip went, I think, in Mahali City. Our deputy chairperson went there, but I accept the invitation to come and really interact directly with the situation so that we know what's happening. Mama, I know you raised a personal problem of paying transfer for elderly people, transfer costs, but it's not only for you. When you are speaking there, I'm like, she's correct. These people are called pensioners. When it comes to uh, electricity and water, there is what we call indigent policy, when they go this way, they are pensioners, there is this. But when their husbands die, they cease to be pensioners. They must pay the same amount of money that I pay, which is incorrect. So, you see, we are opening each other up as we are interacting in these meetings. I live here much more clever, knowing that there should be characterization of pensioners and some dispensation should be given to pensioners especially if it's a transfer of a pensioner to pensioner because they cannot afford i mean twenty thousand. when are you going to save it by the time you arrive there you are no longer there the house is a crisis but please um, um, um mmc of uh, health and public safety you need to take your contacts and that's a specific case we will follow it up and myself and Buiseni, we now have a duty to go and workshop the idea of transfer costs for elderly people um, i agree with you mama you have all the reasons to be scared for your children to go outside um, and when i say to you we're going to build sports and 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 that is under the EFF government. You are going to chase them yourself from the house and say, go to Malema Parks there, yes, build your parks. That's how much it will be safe under the EFF. Now I fully agree with you. We are in a deep crisis. The girl child cannot go and study with a friend at night after 
washing dishes and all of that. There's a bit of time between 7 and 9. Can I go and catch up with my friend? If she goes, we're not sure if she will come back. So, and as a result, our children are not performing well in school. And they are called Danda Hayes, they are this, they are that. They can't go to a library. They can't go study with their friends. They can't do group studies at school. It's not safe. So we are going to fight crime and make sure that South Africa becomes safe, especially for a girl child. Because the girl child is a target of these criminals. The special task force in uh, Metropolis is exactly to combat the corruption of SAPs. Because, you know, Metropolis arrest people with all kind of evidence. We have to now give them over by laws to SAPs. The following day, those people are taken back to the streets by SAPs. Even when the special task force has done a beautiful job. We went to liberate a lady yesterday. She's here. When the secretary was say, saying she's here, I told them they must not tell her to stand up. Uh, the perpetrators of that crime, if they get arrested by Metro Police with all evidence, the subs releases them. Because subs can't be, take it when the shine is taken by metropolis. So, that's why we must elect the EFF government nationally so that subs is under correct police and those police work with the metropolis. The common enemy is criminals and not competition uh, amongst us. Um, very good point, Uncle, about the fishing industry in the Western Cape. They destroyed it. And they've given it to multinational companies. And even small-scale fishing, they don't allow it. They say you must apply for a license. When you apply for a license, it becomes a complicated process. As a result, you see big shipments coming out of your sea. Yet, you don't even own a percentage. It shouldn't be difficult to do fishing. We must give our people the equipment to do fishing and revive the fishing industry in the Western Cape and everywhere else. Then we're not chasing away the multinational companies. They must buy from our people. They cannot come and fish. We must fish and sell to them. Then, in that way, we create a big economy for our people. I, I, I accept and uh, really I'm humbled by what you said about me and my speech and my time in politics, how I evolved over a period of time. I, I, I respectfully accept that. And uh, uh, it really melts my heart that an elderly person who has been watching my journey says today that you are a better person you, like you were yesterday. Because we must never be the same we were yesterday. And when it comes to from an uncle, an old person, you know it is genuine because he's not by my face. He doesn't want anything from me. He has uh, played his role in life. His role now is to be the way he was. Be honest, share experiences with us, share ideas with us on how we can become a better future. Because we are the future. They are not the future. They can only advise us and we decide what we want to do. I know that you were beaten up. You were violated in the same manner as the people of Palestine. What you see in Palestine is, is what has played in our eyes as children. Where our mothers were beaten, where our fathers were forcefully removed 
where our land just got occupied. You are told this Sophia town is not for you. Go far away uh, from the city because white people must be on their own. So we are for human race. And that's why we're in solidarity with the people of uh, Palestine. We don't support genocide and we want peace uh, in the world. So I accept that uh, there are many issues, like the doctor said, uh, really having listened to the few uh, comments that were made, I think we have learned a lot. And uh, our convener was giving me a list here of uh, the things that are needed at the, uh, the retirement home. So the retirement village. So they said, like he said, uh, they will make sure that there is a, um, um, a clinic, satellite clinic, until we work on a permanent solution. And um, we will make sure that there is a, a joint operation with uh, patrollers and with youth leaders, with church leaders, religious leaders, community leaders, to secure that village and make sure uh, there is peace. Like I said to um, our MMC, we know that this place, it's a dangerous place because you guys said so. Now that you know what time the crime starts, we need to make sure that when they start, we start. We report to duty together at the same time. Now, at the Eldorado uh, old age home, village, they say they are, they, sh they are geezers that need to be fixed. So we'll do so uh, in eight homes of elderly people. There are geezers that are going to be uh, fixed and uh, we'll make sure that, I mean, I was looking at the kind of amount of money you pay uh, for rent and all of that, we should be able maybe to relieve you from that for the next five years and look after it. So let's, we must not just come to this meeting and leave. From here, MMCs tomorrow, let's go and just fix broken windows, the ceiling that is not working, make some new paintings, uh, fix uh, the lights, Make sure the yard is clean uh, as a way of showing our people that we don't just talk. We mean exactly what we speak about through action. So, um, I'm going to be leaving now, but the EFF is not leaving. Like they told you, Kalniaus is here, they are here. We are going to be waking the ground to change the Eldorado Park. I'm a telephone call away. Whatever intervention and help they need, I will help them until we make example with the old age village how the government of the EFF cares about the elderly. If we can care about the elderly, it means we can care about everyone. I've got five electronic wheelchairs uh, for five disabled people who need wheelchairs, they are with the comrades here. Please, if there is someone who needs a wheelchair, please talk to our fighters. The leadership is here, and they will give those people five. Oh, there is one already. Yes, so he has already got the electronic wheelchair, and will make sure that the four others receive. Thank you very much. We are going to Pretoria from here. Thank you.